Welcome back everybody. Today we're talking about golf balls. Not really, but I am going to open with a funny story. Every plant has a little bit of like some culture where you collect things that you find around the plant. Mine happen to be golf balls because right on the other side of that hedgerow is a golf course and there are enough bad golfers um, that I have uh, an esteemed collection. And so something funny we like to do is take the golf balls up onto the secondary and on the other side of that is a green and we chuck them over <laughs> because uh, we like to think that we confuse golfers with extra golf balls when they get, arrive to the green. We just, it's, when you start doing wastewater treatment, I, it's a really fun group and uh, it, it, you gotta have a sense of humor. So we, we have a lot of fun here. But let me zoom out and show you what we're really talking about today. And it's anaerobic digestion. This is my anaerobic digester. And this building right here is the original 1960s era uh, wastewater treatment plant. And I affectionately call it the ghost ship. Um, it clearly needs a paint job. We've been talking about sprucing it up. Uh, for a while it's just uh getting to it it looks ugly but it works great the very next segment is going to be us repairing this line and i'm going to explain that project in a second but um why we're going to repair the line is anaerobic digesters are typically full um, unless you're drawing sludge off um, they're going to be full and so um whenever you pump thick thick and sludge into it uh, there's water there's a water layer in here and it's displaced and it and it has to go somewhere and so this returns that um, less thick liquid, I'll say, I won't call it clear, but um, it's turbid, but it, it, and it's got a BOD load, but it puts it back to the front of the plant. So you're exchanging a thick sludge for a thinner water that's turbid and needs treatment, if that makes sense. Um, and so what, what this, that's what this line is. And what happened was um, under the plant foundation uh, that is the return line, you notice I have that valve off. Um, and that's because uh, it, it stopped working and we tried to snake it and we discovered it's, it's, it's toast. And instead of jackhammering the floor, um, we this is my workaround. I'll kind of take you through the dungeon here and show you. This is a little three inch Tiger Flex and excuse my clutter, but you know, it is what it is. Um, this Tiger Flex has made it hard to stay organized in this area, but there's a manifold over there that um, uh, connects to the influent lift station and it, and it dumps in um, my return. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this line, we're gonna pull that valve off and blind flange that, we're gonna put the valve right there, and we're gonna drop that valve right, or that pipe right in there. This valve used to go to a, sl a sludge drying bed over there. Now you see all the stainless steel infrastructure, that's our membrane bioreactor, um, but it um, that sludge drying bed's gone because we put a plant there. Uh, what's cool is somebody had the thought to say, why don't we tie this line into a return line going back to the influent lift station, um, instead of abandoning it. And thank God they did because instead of having to destroy the foundation and jackhammer all this, we're gonna drop right into here and then just let it gravity over. So um, we're in a good spot here. So the next thing you're gonna see is uh, the good people from Enviro, Paul and Wyatt are gonna be here um, doing this work. And uh, after that, we are going to discuss some of the um, infrastructure. And then uh, very last, we're gonna do a whiteboard segment. Let's go on and move on to the next segment and let's repair this line. So we had a blind flange here on the manifold. And what we're attaching to is a six inch flange. So this is a flange adapter, like a Victolic 741. Basically that sits into the groove and you have a gasket that will be on the face of the pipe there, of the groove pipe. And now we can mate uh, ideally a steel flange to this face. Uh, there's also a stub end style if you were using a PVC 90 or a PVC flange, uh, rather, if you'd like to get it to mate with a full face gasket. All right, we're gonna see if it comes back like we think it should. Here it is. So we got some sludge still on the line. So it's been about a minute. It's still pretty sludgy. It cleared up a little bit, but um, since that used to be a sludge line that went to uh, drying beds, it might take a little while to uh, clear all that out. Um, so this is just some residual sludge and we'll get it in the process and treat it. But good, uh, successful project. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much. Um, anything you would like to tell the audience out there, uh, aspiring mechanics and operators, any words of wisdom? Paul, go first. Uh, when you're working in the field, I would say uh, 
don't touch your face while you're working and make sure to take your gloves off when you eat your sandwich. <laughs> very good, Paul. Anything, Wyatt? Uh, no, not really. That was pretty good. <laughs> All right, very good, gentlemen. Thanks again for your help. And uh, in the next segment, we're going to be talking about the infrastructure of an anaerobic digester. Um, and let's go move on to that. Okie dokie. So let's talk about a few of the components you're looking at. And before I do, I want to say that uh, what you're looking at is a vestige of the past. I have worked with three such digesters in my career so far, so I'm not gonna go out and say they're uncommon. You'll, you can bump into them if you're working in older, smaller plants, but the newer plants that are coming out, the bigger plants, the ones that are doing a cogen, biogas, you know, where they're you're running generators and stuff with gas, they're not gonna look like this. They're gonna be mixed and heated and all that stuff. This digester is not mixed, it is not heated, uh, but it does an okay job for what it is. Um, Think about what, what I said earlier. This was built in the 60s. Uh, this is pre-oil crisis. Uh, biogas was certainly something that was produced, but it, it was uh, more of a waste management strategy back then rather than closing a loop um, for uh, running engines and stuff on the, on the, at the plant. So um, I'm just gonna point out a couple things and we're gonna go to the whiteboard and really hammer home what uh, you need to know for your exam. So uh, up top, you're going to see this, uh, this apparatus and it's got a flame arrestor on there because these gases are explosive. Um, and plants these days that don't use the gas for cogeneration, uh, you'll see a flame coming off. They burn it off. We actually uh, scrub it on the other side of the plant. Um, I'm not going to get into all the valving and stuff up there, but uh, we have an odor control strategy that we uh, send it through um, uh, scrubbers. But uh, uh, we also have a vacuum breaker and a uh, pressure relief valve so that the, when the gases build up in this digester, they don't cause it to go boom. Um, these are sensitive to positive and negative pressure. And also when we draw sludge off, um, we don't want to pull a vacuum and have it implode. So there's a vacuum breaker and you can, you can actually hear it when we're pulling sludge gently. <laughs> we're not aggressive with it, but gently you can hear it breaking vacuum so there's not um, negative pressure. And also uh, something you should know is uh, something called a thief hole. And that is a place where you take a sample. Uh, I don't, I have a terracotta roof. It's a steel roof. With, well, it was a steel ceiling with a terracotta roof. I'm not climbing on that roof and breaking those tiles. So what I do is there's rings up in that area. I can adjust them and pull um, supernatants. I can find my scum layer and I can pull samples off different levels to see exactly where the sludge is, how well digested it looks, um, etc. So let's go to the whiteboard. I, I don't want to you know, climb up and down and give you a big tour of this um, digester since it's in, it is an older one. But what we're going to do now is go over to the whiteboard and really hammer home uh, process control, uh, things you need to know about, and some other um, test material. So let's go over there. Okay, I'm going to compress a lot of information into this segment. So hopefully it doesn't run too long. Um, uh, the first thing I'll say is if you're getting anything out of these videos, please like, subscribe, pass it to your friends. Let's help folks get certified. Uh, the next thing I'll say is, you know, I didn't mention it in the last segment, but when we're drawing that sludge off of the digester and that vacuum breaker is doing its thing, uh, you want to be very careful not to introduce too much air into an anaerobic digester because that can create an explosive atmosphere. That is a safety question. So know that. Um, this is part one. Like I've said a couple times, uh, we're not going to get into chemicals and struvite and um, process uh, adjustments if you find yourself chasing your tail. What we're going to get into is mostly definitions and a little bit of process that you're going to run into on your earlier level exams. Experienced operators, please add to the conversation. If, you've, um, if you think I missed something in this or gloss over or give a um, confusing explanation, please put it in the comments below so that people can, um, we can help people uh, get certified. Okay. There are several variations of anaerobic digesters. Another reason I didn't really want to take you on some, you know, super in-depth tour of my mine, especially, you know, especially since it's old. You've got covered lagoons. You've got two-stage where you've got primary and secondary digesters. Um, you've got floating roofs. You've got membranes. There's a lot of different styles. Um, so you, 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 there's no one anaerobic digester. So look that up in your study material. Go over the different um, variations, uh, especially know about floating roofs. I remember being asked about, about that. Um, your main target in anaerobic digestion is volatile solids reduction or destruction, depending on, you know, who you're talking to and what you're reading. Um, that is typically, I didn't write it, but that's typically going to be a 40 to 60% volatile solids reduction. You're really cooking if you're at 60%. Um, and uh, when, when they're destroyed, you have uh, byproducts, and that's gases, 
which we'll talk about down here, and water. And you can, do, you can take that water off and treat it and discharge it. Okay? Um, your finished biosolid should be dark and uniform. I, I like to liken ours when I'm looking at it. Um, I know it's looking good when it looks like a um, very liquidy, because it comes out, it doesn't come out super thick, but it's uh, out of the digester. It's got to be um, dewatered. But uh, it comes out looking like runny uh, brownie batter or, or chocolate cake batter. It's dark. It, it smells anaerobic because it came out of an anaerobic digester, but it's not pungent and putrid like it's rotting. It doesn't smell like that. Um, there's no streaks in it like light brown or gray streaks. Um, there's no, it's a uniform texture. There's not chunks. Um, so these are, these are some of the things you're going to be um, asked about a, a finished biosolid. There's three temperature ranges. The two we're going to focus on are mesophilic and thermophilic. Know about psychrophilic, PSYC. Um, I didn't think it warranted its own line. That's going to typically be about 40 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, roughly. Um, but just know that it's the colder temperature range. The most common, though, is mesophilic. Um, and this is 30 to 38 degrees Celsius or 85 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, ideally 95 to 98 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, do not change the temperature more than one degree Fahrenheit in a day. Um, both of these mesophilic and thermophilic bacteria are very uh, temperature dependent. Um, and how you uh, do that, there's heat. We'll talk about heating and mixing. There's heat exchange. But don't send liquidy, super watery sludge to your digester. You want as thick a, as sorry, a thick a sludge as possible because um, it will cost you more money to heat water. So you want less water because it's hard to heat. Okay. Um, your SRT of 10 to 30 days. Sludge retention time on average is 10 to 30 days. Thermophilic, 50 to 60 degrees Celsius, 122 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is highly sensitive to temperature changes. Your SRT of five to 12 days, okay? Uh, so it's, um, it's a little bit shorter. And, and I remember thermophilic because I'm a gardener and thermophilic composting is hot composting. So it's just a really easy memory tool, thermo, a thermometer, and if you can somehow link that to the higher, highest temperature range, I think that's, that's good. These are gonna, uh, most digesters these days are heated and mixed. This ensures that there's no dead spots, spots where you know nothing's happening, it's just kind of existing. And uh, that's important for volatile solids reduction, but it's mostly important for optimal biogas production. Cogen plants, they've got, some of them got vehicles that are running off this gas. They've got generators. They've closed a loop. They're heating their digester with the gas that they're producing. And so um, mixing it makes sure that, that you've optimized gas production. Okay, everything, you've got even biological activity through the whole digester. The three primary stages of Anaerobic digestion or hydrolysis, acetogenesis, and methanogenesis. This is, you mostly need to know about these. There is an acetogenesis stage, but I think we're splitting hairs when we get there. Um, for your earlier exams, what you need to know is um, volatile solids in the form of sludge are fed into the digester. Acid formers create volatile acids and break it down. There's all sorts of stuff going on in there that we're going to talk about in part two. Um, but they create these volatile acids or volatile fatty acids, and those are food for the methane producers, okay? Um, now, acid formers work faster than the methane producers, so overloading it with too much sludge at once will cause pH changes, which inhibits the methane producers, and it causes problems, okay? Methane formers or producers are very dependent on stable pH and temperature. We already talked about temperature. How do we make sure that the pH is stable? Well, you've got an optimal pH range of 6.8 to 7.2. I'd really like to see it 7 to 7.2 personally, um, but you don't, you don't really focus on pH. That is not the process control you should be looking at. You focus on alkalinity, okay? If your pH is dropping fast, you have already lost the game. Now you're, you're trying to um, you know, send chemicals in. Uh, well, I, I, we're gonna talk about what you do when, you're, um, when you find yourself in this situation in part two. Um, so the, the best way I can describe this on a human level is if you eat a bunch of greasy food and you get indigestion from acid reflux, what's going on? You ate too much, too fast, too much greasy food. Um, you're, you're getting a lot of acid churning in your stomach. What do you take? You take a Tums, just full of alkalinity, right? Because the alkalinity is a buffer against the, the acid and it, uh, it buffers against the change in pH towards an acid and it consumes the acid, okay? Um, so that's kind of the same thing here. 
your volatile acid to alkalinity ratio should be less than 0.1. Um, I, WEF study guide I read the other day said 0.1 to 0.35. I disagree with the 0.35. I think that seems a little high. Um, from my experience, you want 10 times the alkalinity. <coughs> Excuse me. You want 10 times the alkalinity uh, than the acid in the digester, okay? You want a lot of runway on your buffer. Volatile fatty acid levels from 50 to 300 milligrams per liter and an alkalinity level of somewhere between 2,000 and 5,000 milligrams per liter is good. This prevents it from going sour and inhibiting methane production, screwing up your gas ratios, um, and it also helps prevent foaming issues, okay? Overload, real nasty smacks and toxic loads will cause um, some nasty foaming, okay? Um, so, well, now, uh, when I have 10,000 milligrams per liter alkalinity and, you know, I'm going to have 10 uh, milligrams per liter of volatile fatty acids, well, you know, watch out for too high a pH too. That's also bad. If some is good, more is better is never anything an operator should ever say ever in a wastewater treatment plant. You want Goldilocks. You want straight down the fairway. Um, what we do is all about balance, okay? So... If you've got this idea that you say, well, I'm going to just start feeding a bunch of sodium hydroxide in my digester because um, then I'll never go sour. Well, you can go too high, also bad, <laughs> and that creates something called ammonia toxicity, and um, that will inhibit methane production as well. And you could you could go you could end up in that pro, um, in that pickle, but that's way less common. What most people fight is a, a digester going sour, and that's probably mostly what you're going to get tested on. Your gas um, percentages should be 60 to 70% methane, also known as CH4, know that molecule. 60 to 70% methane, 30 to 40% carbon dioxide, and less than 1% hydrogen sulfide. Um, if you m start dropping in methane and climbing in CO2 and you're at a cogent plant, your generators will stop running um, eventually. They, they get less efficient, they stop running. Um, if you And then you have to start flaring it off while you fix your issues, and then you're going to uh, fuels that you're purchasing and your operating costs go higher. Um, if you are at a plant that you just flare off, um, your blue flame will turn into an orange flame. And that's also an indicator that something's wrong. You're burning dirty. Um, uh, very similar to a propane or a natural gas stove. You should have blue flames coming off propane. If it's orange, that means something's wrong, right? Same exact concept. So know those percentages. Okay, that was a bit of a sprint. <laughs> Um, again, if you think I, if I explained anything um, not clearly, or if you think I moved too fast, too fast through, through something, please ask in the comments below. If you um, have anything to add, please put it in the comments below. Let's help folks get certified. If you have a uh, video you want me to do, please ask. I love to help folks um, with their tests. Thank you for uh, sticking through anaerobic digestion part one, and uh, we will see you in the next one. Have a great day.